I'd like to open the meeting at 6.07, 6.08 actually. And let me see. So call to order 608 actually. Uh, first, I would like us to take a moment of silence for the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School um, and that whole community, if you join me. are with you. Um, thanks, Lynn, for your letter today. And all those teachers and administrators working to save those children every day. So, and maybe someday we'll figure out AK-47s don't belong. And it's great. Right here, here. Anyway. Uh, so can I have a vote to approve the minutes of January 18th? Motion <coughs> to approve. A second the Second. Any edits, reviews? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, on to financial statements. So I did um, mail them out to you, and I'm not seeing any variances that I'm concerned about that we haven't already spoke about. Um, you have six warrants tonight to sign for $55,497.10, and there's also payroll warrants, so you have to sign all five pages. I think she put five in there, so if you would sign all five pages, that would be appreciated. So we can continue. It says four sheets. Okay, she put four in. Okay, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. And that's all I have, unless someone has any questions. I did have one question about the financial. Uh, bear with me. How's the lunch money? That's always our favorite. Part. We're going to, um, <laughs> our new food service director has a young child, and instead of bringing her to five meetings, we've decided that we'd bring her to the April meeting so uh, she could meet everyone. Uh, and good. then we'll have um, a, an update on the results of the operations um, uh, through uh, March for each committee and their subgroup meetings. I like her emails. They're very helpful as a parent. Telling the balance Great. of the kids. Great. It makes me pay in more of a prompt way than I did last year because I know where things are. You must rate because I don't get those emails. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Low balance, you know? <laughs> low balance. And low balance is like $72. I don't know. That's not that low, but I get them anyway. So it's helpful. It's a good prompt and reminder. Good. Patty, there's, um, I guess there was a an overage that I saw on um, salaries for specialists in <coughs> page two, I guess it was? Yes, and yes. I, we had talked about that previously. That was because of the loss of the Title I money, um, Conway. We had budgeted about $10,073 in the budget to, uh, to, do, um, to cover a partial salary of our reading specialist. And in this year's allocation, with the new way that the feds are calculating free and reduced, Conway did not have any um, Title I monies towards um, their budget, so we had to make up that 10000 We were able to offset it, if you recall, by the new hires um, in music and in um, the library. And we'll talk about that later because those savings are going to appear in the, as a uh, decrease in our budget for uh, FY19. Okay. Public comment. Silent public. We do have public, but it's silent. Um, okay, discussion items on to the budget. That's always exciting. Okay, I'll start. 
we have a bunch of packet. Um, last October, at the joint committee meeting, I was asked to provide a little bit more um, insight and information into the budgeting process. So what I'd like to do is to just talk a little bit about the beginning of the budget and where we all started. What we did um, this year was a little different than what we had done in years earlier. We sat together, each school, we all sat together with the Director of Technology, the Director of Special Ed, the um, Early Childhood Coordinator, the Curriculum Coordinator, the Principal, and Patty and myself, and we all, and the Facilities Director, and we all sat around the table and we looked at each school individually. It was two hours per school, it was a work session. Everyone was able to give their wishes, their feelings, their hopes what they saw from their department, what is needed to keep each school, Conway especially, the great and wonderful school it is. And so we had some wonderful discussions and a lot of collaboration went into developing the budget and putting it together. And when that was done, we, uh, Patty pushed all the numbers together and then I was able to take the numbers and to take them out and analyze them in a different way than just all the numbers. One of the things that was asked by the, um, the town administrators was that we provide more information to the public, the stakeholders, when we bring our budget to them and ask them to help support us. And my, my feeling was we needed to have a much more thorough narrative for each school and again, the principal and all of the directors that are in this central office that help bring the school together to be one piece, they each wrote about the things they were doing for Conway. We were able to take all that information and put it into a, a narrative for the town annual report. So when the stakeholders and the, the people who aren't as entwined with the school as we are, are looking at the town, they're at the town meeting and we're saying, please um, pay, help pay for the school, please you know, support us, they'll be able to read uh, things like, and I don't think I have a copy of it tonight. I don't, did, did anyone get the, the annual report? We were supposed to hand those out tonight? Oh, I didn't. Okay. I don't have them tonight for this one school, but um, I will send them to you. No, I will send them to you. I think Michael has one. Oh, Michael yeah. has one in his hand. Oh, yeah. I think I did. And a report. And I gave mine to you. You did. You did. You did. I'm sorry. This is our fourth school committee meeting this week. Will we present any budgets? So anyway, and we'll talk about this later, but this is more evidence. <clears throat> Wait a minute, where's our narrative? Um, it's in there. Um, yeah, it's in there. All right. Excited. Well, anyway, we'll talk about it after on the new business. I don't think the narrative's in there. But we all collaborated. That's the narrative, Michael. Michael has the narrative. You, yep, you have it. So that's the narrative that we have presented, and I'll talk about that after. That's on our agenda. But the superintendent's message this year is the most important thing to remember for all of us as we go into this budget season is um, the Hampshire County Insurance Trust. They have found, um, over the years, they've kept the, the premium so low, thank you, the premium so low that they used up a lot of their reserves by keeping our premiums low. And what they've done is, in order to offset that, they propose an increase in insurance co-pays in order to keep that premium down for all of us. This requires the Frontier Regional District as well as the towns of Conway and all the other towns to, uh, to adopt the Mass General Law Chapter 22, 21B, Sections 21 to 23, and enter into negotiations with the teachers union to negotiate a settlement regarding the savings. So there will be a savings by 
uh, increasing the co-pays and bringing down the uh, keeping the premiums at bay. Can I? So th that last qualifier, though, subject to negotiation by contract. The reason that's in there is because 25% of those savings goes back to everyone who participated in the insurance. However, it's up to the unions to decide how they want that money dis dispensed to them. They can get well, cash, they can yeah. put it in their union reserves. It, it depends on what the unions choose. Is it also up to the union to possibly just say no? <laughs> to the money? Uh, to an increased copay payment? Mm -hmm. Am I misunderstanding? No. no. Uh, is it up to so? Uh, so, uh, so what we're doing is the the unions are allowing us to change the benefits of their current plan, and by allowing us to do that, we have to share with them twenty five percent of the savings by making those changes. So could the union say, no, we don't want the 25%. I'm sure they could, but would they? Probably not. Um, as you know, uh, Phil, um, er everyone's health care costs have been increasing far more than their actual um, income. So you're looking at a 2% raise and a 5% raise in your, in your savings. Are you going to say no if you're going to get a rebate? I, I, I don't no, think I, that I remember a few months ago when I think you were talking about going to the unions and, and having the conversation. I didn't, I didn't hear how that went, though, so I'm hearing it now. Right. So, so in January, the, um, the, the, the uh, administrative board of the uh, Hampshire group it, uh, voted the rates based on changing the parameters of the deductibles and the co-pays. So then the insurance company says, okay, with the with these changes, um, you're going to go up about 4.9, 4.7, 3.3, depending on the plan. And then we say to them, well, what if we didn't make these changes? Well, if we didn't, then it could have gone up 10.1, 11.3. So the difference between the, what would have been and is, you calculate the difference, and then 25% of that goes back to, to the union to decide what happens. But it's not just the union that gets the benefit. It's anyone that's enrolled in the insurance. So right now, what we have to do is form a committee with the union, and we're waiting for someone from the state retirement board to send a representative because our retirees who are not on Medicare will all, and participate in these plans will also get a piece of those um, savings as well. There's one committee I'm glad I'm not on. <laughs> <laughs> so that will take, so that will take pay, uh, place. But I wanted to point that out because I think we need to be cognizant of the town uh, because the town of Comrie does pay the insurance for the employees of the school. We need to be um, cognizant. So if you go to page 3 of uh, 30, you'll see some um, pie charts. And so this is what uh, I was able to do to try and actually pull out the information and separate it by what we do. Uh, when we're running a school district and where the money goes. So you'll see on page three the uh, projected expenditures of FY19. What we're spending the money on, what this budget you'll be hearing about tonight is about. And if you look, it says um, instruction, it's the thick one. It's so we spend 73% of all the money that we use in Conway goes to instruction, as it should because that's our business. We're in the instruction business. We teach children. 6% of our money goes to other student services, such as transportation, lunch. Uh, administration takes up 12%. Buildings and facilities, 9%. When we look at the money that we're getting in, our revenue, we look at the town appropriation, that's 80% of the money we get. However, within that town appropriation is the Chapter 70 funding that the, 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 the town of Conway receives. 
So the, the Chapter 70 is in there with the town appropriation. 8% of our budget is school choice. 10% is sped revolving. And that has a lot to do with our uh, uh, substantially separate program that we have here, which is very, very great for us and the whole district. But, and then we have early childhood revolving at 1%. And then we have a SPED grant that gives us 1% of our income. When you turn the page over to page 4, you're looking at administration. Administration is 12% of our budget. When we look a little bit closer, we look at building-based leadership and clerical services. And that's the, the, the front office, the principal, the things that run this building. That's 49% of 12%. So again, that's a really not a very large portion. Uh, insurance, retirement, and other adjustments, that's 19%. 19% of 12% goes to building insurance, uh, some retirements when people retire, and other adjustments. District-wide information and management tech and technology, 11%. The superintendent, the business and finance offices is 19%. So that's all the people that are in central office that handle all of your uh, warrants, they do the payroll, they take in the money, they send out the money, they uh, do everyone that works and all of that. They're 19% of 12%. Uh, school committee and legal services, that's you folks, and that's our legal counsel, that's 2% of 12%. So that's administration. When we look at instruction, which is 73% of the budget, you can see that teachers take up the largest portion at 59%. The teachers, um, as it should be, those are the teachers that do not only the classrooms, but library media, uh, music, art, um, all the other teachers, special ed, that come in and, and take part of teaching our students. Medical and therapeutic services is 7% of 73. That is our OTPT speech. Guidance and psycholo psychologist services, that's 5%. Instructional assistance, that's 20% of 73%. And then our supplies, our materials, our hardware and software, that's 6%. And then our curriculum director, our SPED director, and our early childhood directors, that's 3% of what we spend um, of 73%. We look at our buildings on the following page. 9% of our budget goes to buildings and facilities. The maintenance of grounds, buildings, and equipment, 22%. Heating and utilities is 39% of 9%. Custodial services, 33% of that 9% that goes to buildings <laughs> and facilities. And then our network, our networking and telecommunications is 6%. When we look down at the, uh, the bottom on other student services, that's 6% of all that we spend. And that's made up of transportation services at 56% of 6%. Health services, that's our nurse. Those are our nurse and our nursing supplies. That's 41%. And our food service is 3%. So when Patty begins to talk, these are the pieces that we're looking at. So, again, 73% is our instruction, 12% is administration, the building and facilities is 9, and other student services is 6. So, overall, we're presenting an FY19 budget in the total of, total amount, I'm just making a little change here. Okay, the total amount of $2,382,874. Of this amount, we will be asking for a town appropriation of $1,908,816. This is an increase from last year's appropriation of $64,116, $64, or 3.48%. These additional funds 
of 474,379,000 ,000 are from school choice, federal grants, and tuition revolving accounts. Please note that in FY18, we were not eligible for any Title I funds, and therefore, none are budgeted in this budget. So I don't know if that's FY19 or 18. So again, Patty will take over with the details, the variances, and how it's different from last year, but the total difference is $64,116, or a 3.48 increase over last year. Thank you, Patty. Okay. Great. Thank you. So this budget differs slightly from the one that we looked at last time, and it was basically because we had to make some changes in the central office expenses due to the health insurance being finalized. Um, so I'm just pulling up the last, uh, our last budget here. Um, so when we looked at version one, we were up 3.30 and now we're up 3.48 percent um, so, and the only thing that really changed um, was the um, central office cost so if you go to page 8 of 30 this is our staff and uh, student staff um, page and on the left upper left is uh, we, we, we freeze the October 1st census because that's what our foundation enrollment is based on but if you look below, we this is our current numbers of our current classes that we expect to have last year. Uh, I did speak with Laura today, and we have 12 um, Conway residents registered for uh, kindergarten, and we have two applications for school choice, which are not included in that 12. Uh, on the right is our staff members, and um, we are up to... Um, from last year and those were added during the year during the period of when the budget was developed and the end of this uh, the, and during this school year uh, we had to add two IAs both uh, student driven and on the bottom what you're looking at those are the columns in our uh, teachers contract so I've listed for you how many teachers we have uh, at each level and um, as you can see, we have six teachers in this building who are at the top level of education. They have a master's plus 45 or CAGS, and I think that's the most of any school in, in the union um, at that level. So our, our teachers are very well educated, which is always a good sign um, for the education that they give to our students. Um, page nine of thirty. We're going to um, look at where where we where we are in eighteen. We have a budget um, of one million eight forty four seven hundred, and that's the ten appropriation. The two and a half percent raise was twenty seven thousand four forty six. The um, steps were ten thousand two hundred and fifty nine. We had uh, some degree changes that were two thousand nine seventy eight. We have an allowance here for non-union salary increases in the amount of 5668 We had a decrease due to the new higher savings um, that uh, comes out to 7165 And um, you can see in my narrative, I've given you a little bit more detail on that on page 6 of 30. Um, please note that this is a net number, which included the loss of the Title I revenue of 10073 offset by new higher savings of 17238 So um, the amount we saved with our library, music, and some instructional assistant hires uh, saved us that 17000 but then we had the loss of 10000 uh, We do have a retirement uh, from last year, a late announced retirement from last year. So this year they will receive their retirement buyback money, so we need to increase the budget by 16195 Central office expenses will go up $7,508. Um, Conway actually, I think, had a decrease in the percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, they went from 10.14% down to 10.02. And overall, the uh, total increase in the central office expenses for FY19 was $13,100 or less than 1%. And the majority of that increase was the health costs for the uh, central office personnel and the addition of adding the food service director as a district position. Uh, increase in transportation, 2007. 
that is a contractual in our in our co our busing contract. They get an increase every year based on the CPI index, and that was 1.83 percent this year. So that totaled 2007. And I do want you to know that FY19 is the fifth year of our five-year contract with Ribco. So we will be going out to bid, um, and I will be bringing you some information because uh, the Franklin County business managers have been talking about possibly getting a grant to do um, countywide transportation. And I don't know that that would be our, to our benefit to join, but I will go to those meetings and get that information for you. Um, but for those of you who weren't with us, when we signed this five-year contract, we the next bidder, the next closest bidder, there was like almost a $100,000 difference between Gripco Transportation and, and the other bidder. So... Um, Again, we will talk about that as the year goes on. Yes, Michael. Do, do we have data on how many students utilize the busing? Um, yeah, I believe Laura has a list of how many kids take the bus. Um, we have two bus routes up here in Conway. Um, three. 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 Sorry, three. Um, so we're paying for three buses for 180 days. Um, and they also have to run buses like the size for the possible students, right? Not the actual students. Well, I, I talked about that's correct. And I also um I I uh, so I had the big another, buses have to go out even though there's two kids on them. And I talked to Mr. Gripko um, because another school committee member asked me about asking Mr. Gripko about buying maybe smaller buses. And Mr. Gripko explained if he even if he went down to a 55 passenger bus. The cost difference, mm -hmm. it, it, it just isn't beneficial to him. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he's going to, you know, stick with the 75 passenger fleet mm -hmm. at, at this time. So. Mm -hmm. so have any of you heard anything? There was supposed to be an attorney general investigation in the collusion between Cosmecus and, well, in every county, that there was two or three leading vendors that all bid identical prices for every contract. Well, and, uh, that, that's recent. We haven't had a bid in five years. I know. Uh, we're, we're sort of exempt from all that, but um, you know, I was wondering if that's going to bear any fruit. So mm -hmm. uh, you haven't heard anything. Out of curiosity, how many buses serve Waitley? Two. Two. Has there ever been talk how untenable it would be? To have two buses serve Conway, how many minutes it would add? Is it? It's it's. I do believe the three buses in Conway is more because of the geographical right. size <coughs> of Conway and not the number of students. Right. Um, but but we could talk to to um, to Lenny about that. But I will tell you, Ira, that uh, most of my phone calls that I get are from Conway parents saying, you know, where are my kids? Right. The buses are running late. Or the buses, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so right. it's a, it's a tough. Ge this is a tough mm -hmm. geographical area yeah. area to um, right. to serve. And I can honestly say that because I had to drive the bus route one day, mm -hmm. and I did it in my Altima, and mm -hmm. I was frightened that yes. it was going to right. fall off the Which road. Route? So I could not imagine Which driving route did the you bus. Do? I don't know. Oh God, I could never. I, and Poland, the, the Poland Road, Poland. yes. And then I was up. I, I, I thought I was never going to find civilization again. Yeah. But my GPS caught you know, oh, cut off, and yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm lost in the forest. Lions yeah. and tigers and yeah. bears. Oh my. Totally. And city girl. I'm, I'm like get looking you down, and there's like nothing there. <laughs> and I'm like, how is a bus driving this route? <laughs> so, I have the utmost respect for the, for our bus drivers. That is for sure. And you probably didn't even go through the Poland Gap, yeah. which is about like this narrow. And when the snow builds up, the bus can barely get through. I did the whole Poland road. I did the whole loop. Loop. Yeah. yeah. So. Just one other question. So the six other student services is six percent. Fifty-six percent of that is transportation. Then, so that's roughly three percent of the budget is transportation. Is there other than the busing? Are there other components? Transportation. They're sped transportation, yeah. and that's our next line that went up, okay. uh, three thousand six hundred. So there are some children um, that the um, team decides needs individualized transportation based on their IEPs, or they need uh, specialized harnesses to ride. So that is included in that same transportation number. 
and our transportation here in Conway is going to go up $3,600 for specialized transportation. So right now we have more kids than we did previously getting that specialized transportation. Okay. And most of that is provided by J&B Transportation out of Waitley. Um, and we did have one decrease of $4,380 technology costs, and that was basically not that we cut anything out. It was just a re, um, a, Scott and I working on how to fairly allocate the cost. Some, some things were allocating by number of students, others number of teachers, depending on is it a teacher software, is it a student software. So uh, Conway was able to save $4,380 um, by, by doing that. So the next page is um, 10 through um, 18 is the byline detail of what we just looked at, which is just the town appropriation. So you can see the trends, the FY17 actual, the FY18 budget, and what we're proposing for FY19. And these categories, this is the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. This is their chart of account, which we converted to in fiscal year 16. And it lines up directly with our end of year report that we do that, um, that, uh, that Elaine signs off on and we send in October. Um, page 19 starts to show us all, our, all of our costs by all of our funds. So um, page one is mostly um, administration, which we don't have any costs. Um, if you look on page 21, that's where you start seeing um, some money coming in. So in the school choice column, we are providing $180,981 worth of IAs. Uh, the early childhood revolving is uh, contributing $25,000 to our teacher's salary. Our SPED revolving, which is our WINGS program, uh, does 149,959 of our teaching salaries. Uh, they do $7,372 of um, med medical and therapeutic services. Uh, they do $3,000 for substitutes. Again, it's uh, another 81,297 for in IAs, and uh, the SPED 94,142 pays for one IA at 22. So I always like to look at this page um, because if you look just at the, if you think we're, we're only paying 623241 for teachers, that's not true. Our true cost is $773,200. So this tells us the full picture of what we're spending. Um, so that goes on to page 27. And that is all our totals. Um, our, so in FY19, we will be spending two million three hundred and eighty-three dollars and one hundred and ninety-five, uh, and eighty percent is basically going to be coming from the town, as Dr. Carey had shown you in her the beautiful chart she did. And I do have to say, one of my fears doing budgets is always that I have nobody that checks my numbers. That, and I, I always fear that I'm going to lose something. And Dr. Carey doing these charts this year, she kept coming back and asking me questions, and she'd point out where I had like a formula area uh, error. And she's like, I don't want to be. A, and I'm like, No, I love this. I love that you're you're checking my math and making sure my Excel formulas are working. So it was very helpful. Uh, her doing Could the charts. Could you come do and, that at my work budget? <laughs> yeah. She doesn't add up. <laughs> And that's what she kept saying. It's not adding up to your numbers. So I'd have to, so we'd sit there, yeah. she'd read me her numbers. So it was a check and balance and it was a really great experience. And that's I really awesome. um, enjoyed it and it was very helpful. So I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. that. I did lose 25,000 um, at Frontier <laughs> and I could not find it. We went through number by number by number oh, and, and sure that. enough, I missed, I forget what it was, but I missed the whole line of something. It was actually 30,000 and it, it was, was two computer lines. Yes. And I If they're not people, it's Yeah. So, but it was it, it was interesting and fun. It's awesome. Thank you. It was nice to have someone to share the budget, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the budget stress with. <laughs> so, um, the next page is our projection of our school choice, um, and it says circuit breaker funds, but we don't get any circuit breaker funds. So while we're looking at this page, I want to refer you to the other handout that I gave you that looks like this. 
And this is um, our, the report that I give you annually of our school choice in, out, and charter. So the first one is our school choice receiving report. And in FY17, we had 24 students and they stayed for the full year. Um, and so we received $41,393 in sped increment and tuition of $120,000 for $161,393. And if you look below that, under the FY17, where are our students coming from? Well, they're coming from Deerfield and Gil Montague and Greenfield and Hallamont and Mohawk, South Hadley, Waitley and Williamsburg. And below that, you can see our grades. Um, they, we had five in kindergarten, three in first, two in two, five in third, three in four, two in five, and four in sixth grade. So um, we did our October 1st reporting with the state, and they, in December, give us our preliminary 18 number. So we're up nine children. We have 33 children um, this year. And the SPED increment is estimated to be 48625 <coughs> and the tuition 165 So we will be receiving 213625 or an increase of 52232 um, And what's really interesting is um, you can see that we doubled um, our Greenfield students. Last year we had six, this year we have 12. Mm -hmm. And Gil Montague as well. We had two, and now we have five. Can but we did lose two Mohawks. So can I, can I ask about that? Um, well, just in general, like the uh, I, I never remember a percentage of school choice as high as twenty five percent. That's astonishing to me because I remember just a little while ago it was five or ten percent. And because um, that's such a mixed bag that you know you feel so bad for the towns that lose out on that revenue. Um, in those students, uh, but is this sustainable? In, uh, like, is is it is a twenty five percent school choice population sustainable? Is it, how, what's the phone ringing off the hook kind of thing looking like these days? Well, I'll tell you, I wrote. I mean, my head always took it. I'm looking at Ira talking to Phil. I will tell you that um, uh, I had a parent call, which is wonderful, was twin kindergartners coming in and wants to grab uh, two two school choice spots for next fall, not this fall, next fall. So yeah, I feel um, what happens is these parents tell other parents and that's how we're getting, that's mm -hmm. how we're, that's how we got a ton of Greenfield kids. One set of parents came to visit, <coughs> told their friends, then another set came to visit and then by the time we're done we get six kids. So I have to say I, I, I am um, hopeful that. Well, and we're That's level one school, and we get good we PR had a, out there. We had a psychologist here from um, from uh, Northampton, and obviously who won't be named, in a meeting with us, and he said um, to the parent, he said, I'm going to tell you if you were in this district or this district or this district, you would never get this kind of care that you're getting right here today at Conway Grammar School. And this is school choice, kiddo. So um, I say that I all the time to people and other it. when I go to school meetings or whatever. Yeah. I say, you know, kids in Conway get that even before they're on a 504 and IEP. They just get it because they need it. Right. Exactly. You know? As was the case. Yeah. Right. So right now I have five tours scheduled for possible school choice families. And we have under enrollment for residents. There's room. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of room. That's right. And We're going to have a second right. grade. Whether, mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. That, can, that and people talking in level one school. It's, okay. Right, it's not fair to other districts. It's not, it's not, it's not an equal law. <coughs> and this town, the school benefits from it. Well, and I don't think the wheels are coming off the bus anytime soon, so yeah. we're not going to suddenly drop to level three school and yeah. like have people fleeing out the doors. Right. You know, right. um, not... Not as long as we're all around, right? Just ask next next month when you're getting um, beat up by uh, public officials about declining enrollment. Um, try to remember the increasing school choice population. Yeah. Yeah. There is kind of a peripheral question to this, though, because we do have some students that choose to go out of district either mm -hmm. to private schools or. Oh. 
We're going to see char yeah. cho choice and charter out on the next couple of pages. But yes, True. you're right. So, private schools. Uh, I can get I can get that figure for you because we well, do. Uh, it's school more attendance. tying into our availability for school choice. Is my question. Um, because it, it does like ask the question if Conway Grammar is such an amazing school what are the factors in them deciding not to either attend here during elementary or going on to frontier those, right, those yeah. questions and then you know as a community ourselves if, if we're as a community in Conway edu educating our children together and there's I don't know what the percentage of students that choose to go to other places, but um, looks lower than that comes there, in. There is a, there is a loss of community when those students choose to go to other places. I guess if we end up attracting them back at some point because of our school being so great, will that decrease our availability to offer school choice? Oh, right, right, right. That's a great question. Yeah. So. So the school based um, school choice numbers are based on um, we, we look at a classroom and we say okay right now kindergarten is slated for 14 kids um, we're going to have a full time kindergarten teacher we're going it's going to be the same cost for heat and all that no matter how many kids so um, how many do how many kids do we want in kindergarten where we could we feel that we could meet the needs of so I'm just going to throw out 19 you know I can't promise that's what it is so that that would be um, five school choice. So let's say um, all 12 of these kids. So to answer the question on the next page in terms of where are kids going, um, I only know, if, I believe in exit interviews. I think exit interviews are so important because it gives you an idea of why kids are leaving your district. Um, and so we had one student um, leave Conway last year and had an exit interview. and. and based on the needs of the child and, and things that were going on, um, it was a good choice for that family. Um, I can't respond to the other um, students that are on here because they, I wasn't here when they left, but I do think that um, exit interviews are important. Sometimes what you see is a family moves and, um, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Well, or a divorce happens. You know, I mean, I know multiple kids in the school yeah. whose parents have divorced and one moves to Greenfield and one might stay in Conway or whatever, but yeah. sometimes they still get them up to Conway and sometimes they don't. Right. You know, I mean, that, right. so that, I know that life one, happens. Right. Know? I know one family on this, actually, that um, the kids were in Conway. They moved, they moved somewhere else. The kids continued to come to Conway. But then it just got crazy with sure. schedules and them wanting to meet neighborhood kids and all of that. So, but I think um, exit interviews are important. Our sixth graders in particular, we, we did lose a lot of sixth graders last year out of district. And that was really hard. That was really sad for me to watch because you had this really tight knit group for a long time. And then things started falling apart, apart in March because they found out, find out that these friends are going here and these friends. it was really sad to watch I mean it's really hard for a sen seniors in high school to go their separate ways when they go to college you know all that comes with that separation anxiety and all that imagine being 12 13 years right. old and you're dealing with that we had kids going to four different places right. last year and that was it was really hard to um, to watch it was really hard to support those kids it was really hard and, and there are an enormous amount of good options also which are just hard to ignore I mean I mean I think Frontier has stepped up its game I think in terms of recruiting and you know educating but still you know the the choices there, there are, are a ton of choices, of choices like around. five six different choices yeah. Max Sherrill who's our band uh, teacher at Frontier he can what a phenomenal job he did, right? His talk to the kids, which talked about you can be in band and you can still play sports and you can still do this and you can still do that. I've never heard a high school band like that band. And they came and performed for the kids the other day. Oh, did they? Yeah, and they went to all four of them. And his, his speech, he, he was so appropriate with the kids. He knew how to talk to them. And he was just telling them that, hey, 
don't let anyone tell you that if you're in band, you can't do anything else. These are all the other things you can do. And well, I he, did you think he was, did you get a good response from your kids, Matt? Yeah. 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 My, my son in there. first grade came home and wanted to show me marching band videos because of that. Oh my God. I love him. that. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. Impression. I'll have to email him back. And I went to the sixth grade parents' coffee yes. tour thing. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah, and it's early enough that, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it, at least there were, there were probably 10-ish, maybe 12 yeah. people there. And then we went on a tour and we went through the marching band room and they did a special song for us, which was yes. amazing. And then the strings and then uh, onto the art room, which was amazing. And then I cut out, but they were headed to the academic classes. But I thought it was great. And there's another one. But I do wonder, are they allowing kids, do you know this, Lynn? Or do they allow kids to go for a, like a half day in shadow? Not until the end of the well, school well, year. Well, I did have a parent request, actually. Oh, okay. I had a parent request that their um, son go in shadow. And she actually named the student that that she wanted her son to shadow. I kind of um, would like to do that Who's in too. seventh grade yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, in the, um, Charlene Allen. Yep, it? she's yeah. a guidance counselor. Yeah. Set guidance. that right up. Oh, yeah. good. Set it right up. Because they get to do that at other yeah. schools. All like days. Clayton will yep. go to, yep. you know, wherever in yep. shadow for a day. And yep. I think if they could actually do that at Frontier, too, yeah. it might... Yeah. get them to realize just bring the whole class over yes. well, i think they do that i think we they should start that. That. because the kids when us being in the building we saw the kids visiting all the sixth graders from each elementary on a different day yeah. came and spent the day at the high school that's pretty late though yeah, and that's having very late, that's yeah. late. Yeah. You know? like it has to be now Mm -hmm. with other agree. schools and private schools for you to have that opportunity to start I personally up think we should start in third grade and I former mm -hmm. district we did we started with um, third third eleventh grade science buddies and the kids because then the kids were like since third grade they were like I can't wait to go to Hoosick Hoosick is my school they got free passes to go to the basketball game they yeah. got this they got that they went to see the play but well, we started in third grade so they could they would be on that Right. mindset that Hoosick is my school right you know um, they right. envisioned themselves there. and you you know what third grade is when you know power of suggestion and you start in the fourth grade they go and, fifth, and by sixth grade you know um, well and I thought I you know had, had worked in the school for two years so I thought I knew a lot about the school but I learned something still at the coffee about yeah. like how they run seventh and eighth grade math which was very mm -hmm. interesting and then Sarah Mitchell said something about they're just getting some special certification or something with AP stuff. Yeah, a new AP. Uh, it's called it's an AP research class. Yeah. That combines actually uh, English language arts and social studies. It's a AP research class. That is a new one, and they are going to be presenting it. So I think we're up to. 12 AP classes wow. That's awesome. at uh, Frontier. That's awesome. So, um, one of the things that I've always thought that we were uh, handicapped about is we're the only town that doesn't have Frontier sports teams practice on town fields. And you, think, you might think that that's no big deal, but that's all part of kids growing up thinking that we're part of Frontier. And every other town, they're walking home from school, whatever, driving home from school, they see a Frontier sports team practicing. Oh, and the Red Hawks come too. By the way, they volunteer here. That comes all right, awesome. right, right. But, but uh, they don't. They don't come down and do like a soccer practice. Right. They, they're, they're just not. They're, yeah, they're yeah, not they're part of our community. Them, right. And and I, I remember asking. I, I when I I found out that that's never going to really change because whatever field they practice on, Frontier has to maintain, mm -hmm. which would be more. Oh, right. And we've got a bus of kids up here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, so that's like that's locked in, but I always thought that that's that harms us in uh, meaningful ways. And um, but that, like what Kristen was saying, we should give out tickets so the parents can bring the kids down yeah, to a yeah. game free and game, they can see free, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and I don't think there is a charge for our soccer for our soccer games. I think it's uh, just basketball and football that have um, entry yeah. fees or some contest or something to get them down there to like get, you give them like little hawk tickets like right night 
for the little hawks to go to, even if it's right. soccer and it, you, so you don't pay, but it's like something special. It's right. a little hawks night, and they wear their little shirts and they go in the stands. Well, I've them. never been actually to a Frontier football game, but now that I've seen the marching band, now I think I want to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> they seem okay. like and they're kind of cool. just have to put a call out to the volleyball team. They oh. won the state champion this year, and they were I, phenomenal. I think that's like the fourth year in a row we've I been know. state champions. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. 15th they year in a row. Um, is, the other thing is that, uh, you know, the, yes, there are there is a lot of good competition um, for the to, for the students to go to, but every other institution invests significantly in marketing and admissions. Yes, they do. And we do not. We have nobody. And uh, our reputation. R right, but um, but but when you actually talk to the parents and the families of the kids that are going elsewhere. They have no accurate information. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, yeah. they're based it on right. just crazy stuff. Right. Um, and like, I, I, when, and when you look at the money, when you look at the money that we, the direct money, Chapter 70 money that we get for every kid it, that goes to our district, and and when you look at the out, the other side of the equation, the outflow that we have to pay for kids to go to charter, the diff, like. An admissions person would be paid by like a turnaround of like two or three kids a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I, I do not. I've been trying for years to say let's You're hire. Preaching to the choir. Well, not really. I mean, let, let's hire an admissions person. Do the numbers. The, it, just do the numbers. It, yeah. it, it would pay for itself. And if it doesn't, then like don't carry on with it. But um, I, I just you know sometimes you have to spend money to make money, and I. This, that, this is one of those things. I'd like to have at least some kind of information brochure or something that we can e-message to all the sixth grade families of, of the four union schools. Just that's, that lists everything that we do and everything that we have in a very bright and colorful, mm -hmm. you know, brochure. Something that really stands out and says, look, this is what we do at Frontier, and we do it really well. That's what I would like to do. And, and can, I'll tell you what surprised me when I, when I do the budget. I, academics, I know. Sports, I know. Our music program and our art program. But the number of clubs that we have oh, yeah, is amazing. Yeah. That I never realized how many clubs yeah. there are and that these kids are participating in. And, 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 um, Very and, important. And, Pardon? It's very important. Though. It yeah. is very important. So it, it, it yeah. just makes such a well-rounded so, student, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you, that they can participate in, in clubs yeah. and sports and academics and music or the arts. Um, we're listening to them right now, rehearsing for the Wizard of Oz, which is coming up, and that's it's just amazing. It's going to be, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Gonna be amazing. Or do it during the day and bring the little kids. Yeah. Oh, why don't Maybe we, we don't go do to a do, go down to a dress that's rehearsal or something? Yeah. I was say, we don't little do kids that. would love. That. We should. Yeah. All right, that's and something. And then two two other. Um, the, the first, just going to like what happens when a group of sixth graders get split up like that, and I'll just um, parents don't realize how bad that is, and. Um, it, it's just very bad. But in my daughter's case, the sixth grade class here was 25 kids. There was nine that went to Frontier with us. Wow. And, um, and, and she was a part of a girl group that was yeah. thick as eight, eight girls I, that were just I, thick I, as I, thieves. I saw and, it, yeah. and the thing about it is that they've all stayed thick as thieves through the whole time, but none of them, and just speaking from, to their parents, none of them have fully immersed themselves in the institution yeah. that they're at. They've all like only been partly there, and yeah. they all socialize with the same group. But it, it, it's hard. It's, it's bad. It's it, 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 you know, it, it is in some degree. It's also, you know, they get a little sick of each other by the time they get to sixth grade, and they're ready for some change. So, you know, it's just it's kind of a and mixed bag. One la last thing, Patty, is that the, the the spreadsheet that showed how much Frontier is subsidizing the Conway. Uh, charter is that going to be part of this in any way? No, uh, I gave that to the town. Uh, I, I pointed that out to uh, the town administrator today, Mr. Hutchinson, when I sent them the frontier budget, because he was um, the this this is the year that uh, Conway is getting hit with a larger increase in their frontier assessment than other towns, um, and so he he I said to him, thanks for making me laugh because he, I sent them an email and he wrote me back, thanks. 
I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I had to stop by to drop off the bill. Um, and so he was talking about the large increase. I said, but let me show you this page so, um, and show you the disparity between the amount th that are going out and, and, and what you pay because it's, it's based on the assessment rather than per child. So, and that's a huge yeah. thing. And the, so the frontier assessment is going up to the ten, to our town 60 something thousand. Actually, it's it like 7.9% if I remember uh, yeah. correctly from off the top of my head, but I, I can look thousand. it up. But if, I, I just want to... My, my, my point was though that like it's up to you guys to like mention that, yeah, the total tax bill increase is a hundred and something mm -hmm. thousand, but here's ninety thousand that Frontier subsidizes you on. Or your other towns are subsidizing. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's also important to note in this conversation that um, Frontier has about a hundred and sixty school choice kids. Mm -hmm. School choice kids in. Just so you know, I mean, Conway kids maybe not, um, maybe aren't, as in you know they're maybe making other choices, but. For Frontier, there's students all over Franklin County that are making the choice to go to Frontier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, that came from a question of the sense of community. I, you know, as we, if we're retaining our community at the elementary level, there's something we gain from that, is mm -hmm. what I mm -hmm. wanted to talk yeah. about. Definitely. I do have two other questions that kind of relate to the students coming in, students coming out. How do we incorporate is that, you know, I'm brand new on the committee. How do we incorporate our community's desire for what our school looks like and does? Do you know what I mean? Like, um, just take Hatfield, for example. They recently designed a, an outdoor kindergarten component to their school. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not completely familiar with it. I just kind of heard about it. But they're just incorporating way more outside time into their kindergarten curriculum. Oh, outdoor education type yeah. stuff? Yeah, and I think it was a community-based initiative decision that created it. Mm -hmm. So if there's things that our community is desiring, our school does yeah. and looks like, how do we give them a voice at the table of what their school likes, because it is their children. Usually people bring it to us. Do they bring I mean, it to the school, school committee? committee? And then we bring well, we it did, forward, we or they bring it to Kristen. Right, we did a survey last year. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie, you were involved in that too. We've, we got quite a few responses, and that's part of the reason why we added a couple things. Help me remember some, like the um, all school meeting with parents com coming in early and visiting classrooms. Mm -hmm. What else did we add? Class Dojo yeah. we added based yeah. on the results. Mm -hmm. um, we added some, and so uh, um, I, we're planning on doing another survey again this year, but we took the results. We had a, we had a good resp number of responses last year. We also, um, have, we also have the school council uh, where we have parent representatives, mm -hmm. and they bring to the table things that they hear in the community or things that parent might let parents. And we have an, um, a t uh, uh, what do you call it? public comment at school committee, I mean school council. Yeah. People don't usually go that route, but the three parents on it might come in. Well, for instance, somebody's yeah. been trying to bring forward more STEM stuff, a parent, since I've been on the school committee again for years, and yeah. I think maybe finally it's gained yeah. a little traction. Doing, yeah, John's so, doing some great yeah. stuff. Right. We're going to have a big STEM day. and um, okay. But we've been trying for that right. since. Well, like I know yeah. the kindergarten. Yeah. I know that. You know, it's good. Great. We got before they left the school, yeah. but that's good. I know that Sunderland made a big shift towards STEM in a couple of their grades, but maybe that was teacher-driven? Oh, it's probably standards-driven. All the, the standards have changed, but the uh, professional development that all, all the union schools have the same professional development, and they pretty much all follow the same yeah. um, STEM or science initiative, which is a really uh, constructive, constructive and hands-on uh, Mm. science and what they do is they meet in grade level meetings on mm. these early release Fridays and they meet a lot of times and correct me if I'm wrong but they develop these units or these ex experiences that the students would do in every school at that grade level. So, so. The, so the work that the Sunderland teachers did 
over the summer. Oh, the summer's at a that different thing. Camp yeah. innovation yeah. that no, they yeah. brought back to their school. No, that's, that's something, something different. different. Okay. Yeah. That that's a, that's an enrichment program. That's enrichment a summer program we offer. Right. But it is all connected to the Hitchcock um, mm -hmm. Center, which is where all of our teachers, all the the right. four towns, they are they're all getting the same training from the Hitchcock Center to bring those kinds of experiences into the classroom. Yeah, I saw that advertised in August, yeah, the uh, Hitchcock training. Yes, yeah. and, and they do a great job. And I was here, I was here on, was it last Friday? Yes, you were, I was here Friday and they were, uh, I was in, um, I think it was third grade and they were using, I don't know what the program's called, they were making houses and it's, what, what is it called, science? Something. I don't know. It wasn't mystery. Oh, mystery, mystery science. science. That's it. Mystery yeah. science. Oh. And they were doing that. that, and that mystery was a blast. Science. And um, it, it was just a real blast to watch those kids. And they actually were wearing things on their heads, and they were their science antennas. And it was just a lot yeah. of fun. I mean, just mm -hmm. the, yeah. our, our first graders do the bee bots, You know where they program them. Yep. And, yeah. yeah. So, so I guess those, some of the things you're talking about, I I didn't know that we were doing mystery science here in our district. Yes. Yeah. We love mystery yeah, science. But so is there a way to freely advertise that that's how, like we're in doing these exciting things, I guess? Cause I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's our principal's report right, right. every yeah, and month. And our uh, this will go out to all the members of the town. And I believe that our curriculum uh, coordinator put in science. She's got mathematics, literacy. I think the teachers do a lot of that on do dojo, like sort of, True. I, I hate yeah. to keep turning to you, Maggie, but uh -huh. when you do something... Yeah, and there are, uh, like with Mystery Science, there are links that you can send. I've done that once for mm -hmm. families, and I've got mm -hmm. good feedback on that. Mm -hmm. so. Is that just for that grade? Just for that, right. So it's just for a certain okay. lesson, and if, like parents can view, families can view part of it for 10 days, I think it's valid once I send mm -hmm. it. Send the link. Mm -hmm. So I have done some of that. Mm -hmm. So just coming Maggie back to Maggie teaches that. fifth grade, so Maggie West teaches fifth grade. Uh, so just coming back to that question of if community members are expressing what they want our school to be, and they express it to us, like is it, or we want to get feedback, like how do Come to what's me. the what's the school committee's role in helping shape all that? I guess I would love if you communicated okay. with me. Yeah, I mean, whenever a parent approaches me and brings it to me, I either bring it directly to Kristen and or Lynn yeah. and or the committee. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, if somebody wants to see more, we're definitely open to you know. Yeah. And and, and I think part of the part of the problem is, and I hear this over and over again, is communication. They don't, they don't, we're not blowing our own horn. But when we sit down and we go through all the ways we communicate with the families, I'm trying to think of something else hmm? that doesn't directly go right into their email, but... You can start blogging. I, well, there you go. <laughs> but there's, there's newsletters. Twitter accounts. There's newsletters from the schools. There's, um... Everything no, is open I think in these school committee. Big events like the Wizard of Oz yeah, or yeah. things that are unusual that happened, you know, like yeah. the fact that the band came here and visited this. It's kind of like these bright spots that people yeah. can latch on to maybe. But, we call yeah. points of light. And, yeah. mm -hmm. Just one one thing about just what you said is that um, uh, when parents come to school like school committee is responsible for policies of the school. Yeah. So when and when parents when you can get a parent to come here and do public comments. Um, there's a court. Whatever parent does that, you, you end up seeing them at town meeting. That's mm -hmm. just my personal. And so, um, I've just noticed that. And so, if we can get, I'm a big fan of trying to get parents to come mm -hmm. and experience the democracy in action. Yeah. Um, to support the school at town. Well, and to see how just to see how it works, and that yeah. it's you know it's a, the citizens that make decisions. Mm -hmm. and, so, Patty, I don't think you were done with that, taking us through this no. report. Do you want to go back to it? Sure. <laughs> I do. Yeah. All right. So I just want to uh, show you on the bottom uh, where it says choice receiving, and I have the net change column. I want to I show you what I'm comparing. 
I'm page. trying to compare, not like year this year to 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 next year, but if we had five kindergartens in seventeen, in seventeen, how many of them did we keep in first grade? So it's diagonal math. So it was five, and now we only have four. So we lost one of those students. Grade one, we had three school choice students, but in grades two, we have seven, so we picked up four students. So I don't want you to think my math is wonky. I'm just showing you how if we're maintaining the same school choice students. Oh, I see what you're um, so the second page here is our choice sending report. Uh, and last year, there was 13 students who went out. Um, the FTEs were 12.81, which means someone didn't stay a full year. Uh, the SPED increment um, the town paid was 57769 and they paid tuition in the amount of $64,050 for a total of $121,819. Um, and where did those students go? Deerfield, Hatfield, Leverett, Mohawk Trail, Northampton, Sunderland, and Waitley. This year, uh, as, as of the December report, we only have seven out. Um, and the SPED increment is uh, estimated to be 52,006 and tuition of 35 uh, for a total of 87,600. So it's a savings of 34,219. Uh, and right now those students are at Hatfield, Leverett, Mohawk Trail, Northampton, and Sunderland. Um, and they range uh, in grades one through five only. There's no kindergartners out and no uh, grade six students at school choice out. Uh, page three of five is the charter. And um, uh, I, I forgot to change the number in the, uh, where are they going? We have three students last year and three students again this year that are attending the Chinese, uh, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School. So in FY17, the town paid 44397 and in 18, they will pay 46131 or an increase of about $1,700. Now, they do get partial um, tuition a, um, charter aid back in the formula, uh, but I do believe it's a three-year phase-out program. Um, now, and then pages four and five is just some historical data that I found on the website that I thought you might be interested in seeing. Um, just uh, school choice trends for Conway. Um, you can see we really um, didn't start taking in students until 2002. Well, actually, uh, 2000, in the year 2000, we, took, we had a half a kid. Um, and then each year we see it growing and growing um, to up to 24 pupils last year. And you can see that our receiving is always higher than our, our sending, which is a good indicator as well. And then five of five is just the school choice and other in-district enrollments. Um, so you're seeing uh, last year in 2000, we had 17% of our kids were choice uh, because we had, we had 141 kids, 24 of them were uh, school, uh, school choice. So going from that report, you can see where the numbers are coming from on page 28 of 30. It, you can pretty much line them up on page 1. And um, when we look at this and we say projected FY18 beginning ending balance, we are not spending a year in arrears. We're spending a full year and a part of a year. So even though it's a negative number, it's not a cash flow negative number. So we really, um, in seven, it's what we projected in 18 was we should have only spent 171,814, but we had already spent 60,000 the year before, so we only had 100 and, almost 112 available. And again, we were thinking we were spending 143, so we would be in the negative of 31,382. But our uh, beginning or ending balance was a little lower, and our tuition was um, our actual lower in 18 than we anticipated, and our costs were higher. So we're going to end the year at about 50,472. Um, so we'll begin the year 19 uh, in the whole 50,472 but where it looks like we'll be bringing in 213 and what's budget is it is 180,981 
So we'll only be 17828 So that bump does put us in a better position. Um, most of the schools, when I got here, like to have to spend a year in arrears, meaning we would spend the 17 money in 18 and the 18 money in 19, because if we ever stopped the program, it would give us a year's worth of revenue to try to bridge that gap. And that's what, what, what the theory around that was. Um, so now the next page, 29 of 30, this is our SPED revolving fund and the projections uh, we have for that. And this is um, the, our WINGS program. Um, and we're still we're still doing pretty well in this program. Um, we budget the revenue very conservatively, but I'm sure um, for 19 it looks like we're, we're going to be uh, down 163. We have a lot of sixth graders matriculating this year, but I also know we'll probably get more referrals um, coming in during the year because this is a very well needed uh, program in the area and it has a great reputation. So. Um, it still has a positive balance at the end of the year. And it basically pays for itself. Um, and then the last page is just the different allocations uh, based on the student enrollments for all the different categories. And um, I had a question asked last night. Um, the difference between uh, the Union Regional Superintendent's Office and the Union 38, we have some people who only work in the at the union level. So our curriculum director only works in the four elementary. So she's not included in the in the five-way split. She's only included in the four-way split. So that's why there's two different calculations. And then the third calculation is the uh, assessment um, for Frontier. And as you can see, as Phil pointed out, um, Conway's going from 15.86 up to 16.22. So that is quite a jump for them. And that is, um, there was one other thing I wanted to um, bring to your attention during my report. Um, and I, I just got reminded because I just got an email. The last time we were here, we were talking about the frozen pipe that, uh, that had frozen. Um, and the total cost of that was $14,300.66. Wow. I did forward this invoice per your request to Tom um, Hutchinson, the town administrator, and he has submitted it to MIIA, who is the insurance, town's insurance carrier, to see if they will refund us any of these, if we're covered for any of these costs. Any, any thoughts on where we can store that little bit of knowledge so that in the future, so that, we, that was one yeah, of the things that, like, how do you, you're right. where, where, how do you, you're right. so that the next time, we're gonna, it's going to be another cold right. winter at some point, and it's right. gonna, the same thing is going to happen, unless so somebody it's, knows about it's, it. It's, it's, in, it's definitely now in the file cabinet where it says building and maintenance, but other than that, I mean, probably I should send the same report I typed up to the superintendent just so she can have it in her office and maybe... I mean, yeah. Well, it's your maintenance oh, yeah. guy that's got to have the, the memory. He's, it's, he's the one that's and he's, in he's, charge of the building. He's in his last year. He's retiring. Oh, he is? Oh, he is? Uh, he hasn't. It, it's not. Oh, it's. Oh, he, he announced it publicly to the committee, to the, to the building committee. So that's all I know. Well, he hasn't letter. told us. Okay. Next year is his last year. Oh, next year. But he'll yeah. always, there'll always be an office. There'll always be an office and there'll always be a facility director right. who needs to know these things. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for that. One last question, Patty. Do you remember the, the letter that the selectmen sent to you right before, uh, after we finished our uh, budget process and right before town meeting with, with all those questions and claims about health insurance and about EPUB? and all that and then you, we couldn't make heads or tails of it and you called Tom Hutchinson and he said just kind of yeah. no I don't recall this at all Phil all right because that's going to be you're going to hear all about that next month again and what would be the impact of the town voting to, that the school has to pay its own employees health insurance it would just be a, they'd have to transfer the funds to our budget exactly um, so you're going to hear that they don't get that well, we that, reported. That. I reported on the end of the year report. 
Um, one of the things that Lynn and I, after the budget season, that we need to get on the agenda with the four town administrators is that we need to have what they call an indirect cost agreement. And it's a, an agreement between the select board and the school committee as to what costs should be reported on the end of the year report. What costs do the town bear for the school? So I get it. I do um, an estimate for the Franklin County retirement assessment that they pay. I get the uh, health insurance numbers from Jan Warner, and that gets reported. Um, but there's other things that they could that we could report, like plowing. If they're plowing for us in the winter, um, if they they could give me a dollar amount that that's equivalent to, we could report that. Um, so it's something that Lynn and I in the spring for budget season are going to be working on. But there's the, the 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 problem with transferring, and this is Deerfield's asked the same question. The problem with transferring it to our budget is then we have to do the bill, and there the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust will only give us one bill. So Jan's not going to want to give me the bill for the schools. But you guys, if it's in your budget, are going to need to sign that bill every month, and you're going to want to make sure that I check it and make sure that it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that becomes an issue because Hampshire Group will not give us more than one bill. So will it, so what's what's going to happen? That the town would pay they, the the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust would get two checks, one from the town, one from the school vendor account. And what's the point of it? There's, it, it, I don't see the point of it if we're reporting it on the end of the year report like right. we are. Right. Okay. Well, and, more to come. And the same thing with the EPUB thing, yeah. with the OPUB thing, and um, that when, if they claim that there's a five million dollar unfunded pension liability that we're hiding, what's the response to that? Well, okay, so OPEB affects everyone, and again, we've had this conversation yep. in Deerfield. They keep saying, we're going to put it on the schools, and I say, okay, well, wait till I give you frontier your assessment for Frontier's $11 million liability, because we haven't been doing that. So, everybody's got to be responsible for their own OPEB. Good answer. Those are coming next month. I think she's ready. I think so. Um, anyway, I really appreciate the way the budget is laid mm -hmm. out, the explanations, the narratives. It's really very, so much more transparent and clear. And I think it prepares us, too, for questions that may come our way that we're not just like, uh, you know, we yeah. actually have something to work from. So really appreciate that. Thank you, Elaine. Uh -huh. um, all righty. Are we going to do NESDEC report? Um, I in your packet is included this NESDEC report and it's mainly uh, we provide them with the numbers every year and they have a very complex uh, method of formula to make some projections based on our historical enrollment and it includes uh, frontier numbers the entire school uh, district frontier and all the Union 38 schools as well as what their projected enrollment is. So if you look on the, um, the back of the first page, you'll see a, a block like this. So this is where um, Frontier and Union 38 have been from 2007 to 2017. And you can see where we started at 1,400, roughly 1,463 students. And we're down about 1,180 now. And um, the, but to me, the more interesting one is on the following page, the projected enrollment one, where they're projecting us out until uh, pre-K to 12 until 2027. And when you look at that. Um, it doesn't break down school by school, but it certainly tells us that we're pretty flatlined for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. give or take 40 students. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that bodes well for us. I think that bodes well for the district. Uh, we're, we've been so concerned about losing enrollment, but even from this, um, this this diagram with the uh, the different points. Historically, in actuality, you can see from 2007 to 2012, we have dropped. But from here on out, through their projections, 
it's pretty flat line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess each year they continue to do mm -hmm. this, and hopefully it'll continue to look like this. That's the Union one. Let's take a look at the, the Conway one. Much scarier. Is the Conway one scarier? I'm Very scary. Yeah. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So Conway, historically, um, Month they'll start having babies if you're going to. So in 2012, 11 Be babies were born. <laughs> and uh, so they're basing a lot on that. So when we look over here, um, again, the Conway students, and this includes students uh, right pre K to 12 from 2007 to 2017. Conway has gone down a bit. Um, I'm not sure that this includes our school choice students. I think it includes our Conway students. And so from 219 students in 2007 to last year 178, and that includes Conway School and those students going to Frontier. Now that could mean we have, of course we have many more students living in Conway, but they're not going to Frontier. Frontier. And this, then this shows Conway's population of st the student population drop is bigger in raw numbers than Frontiers. Well, that makes sense because yeah. our yeah. kids aren't going to Frontier. Sunderland is growing, and they're going to Frontier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sunderland is the big, mm -hmm. wonderful aberration. Mm -hmm. And then um, again, you can except it see wasn't. It was right. go yeah. getting smaller. Yeah. And yeah. Now suddenly, it's it's they had a bump day. in the road around 2009 when yeah. they cut everything out, and they the families, like they say, they voted with their feet, and off they went. They, they brought got 750 new units of new con new uh, housing being built. Mm -hmm. And then they the students came back, and um, they're doing they they are doing great things over there mm -hmm. as well as we are here. We're doing mm -hmm. marvelous things here. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful school. Mm -hmm. So again, our pre-K to 12 to, you know, 2027, and a lot of this too is based on the birth rates. If, if, mm -hmm. if there's only 11 babies being born in Conway at any given time, mm -hmm. uh, any given year. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep an eye on that. But my sense is we have such a great reputation and it's such a high quality school mm -hmm. that school choice will um, always be yeah. um, the savior of this district. Yeah. When you look at the trends in school choice, yeah. it inversely mirrors, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, right. the historical enrollment like in such a ridiculously true way. We should remember to bring these to town. This is, this is the easy part of this. Because other districts don't Seriously. have this inverse relationship. We're right. level in this room, they come in. And, you know, 25 right. school choice students, if we have two or four kindergarten registrations, okay. I mean, that's pretty reliable yeah. data. Yeah. You yeah, know? You're right. And that's what translates into yes, it's worth having the two extra instructional assistants. That's why we get these mm -hmm. high schools, especially with more rigorous computer-based MCAS Well, the more you fund your school, yeah. the higher quality school, That's right. the yeah. more you're going to draw yeah. educated people um, who shop schools. And for people that, that don't value education, but they value money, well, it's right there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not fair, but we're the recipients of that. Yeah, you know? right. So, well, and yeah. it, it, it's, it's justly deserved because mm -hmm. the teachers in this building, the staff, the teachers, the people walking up and down the hallway, yeah. everyone. Speaks for itself. It, it, such joy to be here, such such caring and compassion for the students, such high quality instruction and the care and the, uh, the planning that goes in and the hard work. It, there's not enough to say about this staff. And Absolutely. This, uh, this leadership and it's a very happy place. Mm -hmm. Anyone would want to come here and spend a day here, as I often do. <laughs> <laughs> so as we, as I was speaking earlier, I'll just do this really quick. This was the narrative I was talking about. Yeah, it's as great. we all sat together around the table discussing what our dreams and hopes and needs are for Conway, we mm -hmm. also every person wrote a narrative about this school and the things that they spoke about to help our taxpayers understand is um, 
about our assessments, our child study teams, our professional development, our community events, uh, the science and engineering design, um, and that's where we talk a lot about the focus of curriculum work in the Union 38 schools is designing curriculum that teaches critical thinking skills through science and engineering design projects. Classroom engineering activities often require students to work in teams where they must collaborate and communicate effectively. Students solve problems using the steps into the design process, ask, imagine, plan, create, improve. Examples include designing and building a bird feeder, creating a model of a solar house, designing a rainwater capture and cons conservation system, and building model roller coasters using scrap materials field trips, ongoing professional development, and subscriptions to innovative web-based science curriculum sites have supported this initiative. And again, that is mystery science and all those other great things. Our mathematics, our literacy, and of course, we really, really need to recognize and thank all of the dedicated faculty and staff of Conway Grammar School. Because of their efforts every single day, we have achieved this high level of success, and as well as the school committee. Um, you folks are so supportive of everything we do, and we really do appreciate it. So this is what is going to be in the annual report, along this with these numbers. This is great, really, what, what people need to see. As a, yeah. We always sent in these numbers, but the uh, the town <clears throat> administrators, I have to tell you, Tom and, and the rest of them have been so good to me. Oh, no good. And um, just kind of asking, and so each year, these new um, things that I that were put in place that I was asked for as part of my goals, and we spent hours on those goals, but it's really it's really going to pay off, and they will oh, yeah. get better every year. So I'm very pleased by the administrative team and Kristen and Patty for all the hard work she does. It's, it's tough, tough, tough going, I know now, and um, everything you folks do. So thank you all. Great. Thank you. Yeah, this is a great narrative. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Um, I'm going to, I'll take that as you, that's your monthly report also. That is, yeah. that's all I got. Kristen, do you have a monthly report? The only thing I wanted to say, two, uh, two quick things. Um, so the Grinspoon Award uh, is a Teacher of the Year Award, a teacher nominated by um, peers. And this year um, I went to a teacher at Frontier and Conway. And Lynn um, made the announcement and presentation of flowers to June Chamberlain today. Oh, cool. Our yes. teacher in the WINGS program who is oh. very well deserving of that award. And I, I wish, I do have a videotape I can show you privately um, because of the nature of the kids in the class, but oh, you should have seen the kids. They were more, so we are so proud of our teacher and <laughs> hugging her and you thought they won the gold medal. <laughs> that was great. That's awesome. June must have been overwhelmed herself. She, yeah, she was speechless. very teary-eyed, speechless for the first time, probably <laughs> ever, right? <laughs> speechless. It was. And then we told her she's gonna have, she's going to a fancy dinner, and she's and she got redder and redder and redder. Awesome. So it's nice. But you're right, very well done. Outstanding her. program, mm -hmm. best um, social emotional program I've seen in my whole career. Really mm -hmm. outstanding. That's good to hear. Yeah, it's really academically based, and then mm -hmm. the, the other stuff works around it. So. Excellent. And then I'm not going to go through all the nitty gritty of I, last meeting. I did um, say that I would put, I would give the NWEA scores. Um, these are this is a really good dipstick to see where we are and um, high perc high high percentage of our kids in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade are um, at or above that benchmark. And so we could leave it at that, but um, our teachers are um, much better than just leaving it at that. So. We met teachers grade three, four, five, six, reading specialist, special ed teacher, and I, um, to really talk about um, kids and percentage of kids. And I don't know if you remember last year, but our big focus was going to be on those kids' high achievement, high growth, because um, we noticed that our percentage were low. They were achieving high, which is great, but the growth was sort of, and we're really, um, really nailing it in some of those areas. 
The other thing that we did, which I think speaks to the budget and I, when the IA question came up, is we looked at some of the um, low growth areas and really asked as a team why and what's going on. And quite a bit had to do with um, specific classes and specific needs in classrooms. So um, we rearranged all of the IAs, I mean, like six IA schedules. Um, you know, here we are in the middle of the year to go in, okay, when do you have math specifically and when do you have reading specifically and when do we have, you have writing specifically. So we did all these schedules by hand and um, really flipped things around mm -hmm. over the past two weeks. Uh, Maggie was involved in that process. And it just goes to show you this idea that every teacher has an IA. It, it, that's not, we, we do it based on the needs of the kids and where the needs are. And this could change again in a month. Um, it, it could change again in two months. So. Um, it's prepared to articulate that at town meeting. Yeah, yeah, and the teachers are really cooperative, you know, um, second grade teacher working with a fourth grade teacher, just really cooperative in terms of what the needs are. People willing to change their schedule, you know, teachers are really into schedules and routine, which is wonderful for kids, but teachers willing to, maybe I can move this writing block and that, that way we could, you know, you could have this IA coming at this time and you could have this IA coming. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of the IAs on roller skates right now, <laughs> but we're checking them with them regular and making sure, but this is the way we use our mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. a real smart way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was it, because I knew we were going to have a big okay. budget tonight. And uh, Ashley's not here for the collaborative report. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, d I did have a parent ask me, and Patty, this may be why you're driving the Poland bus route, about their kid. It's like a mile they have to walk the kid down to get the bus. Yeah, we can't solve that. We got a new policy on, on the way. We do. I don't. I like that policy. No, no, we, we, oh, you we don't? Can put a uh -oh. golf cart on the bus and have the golf cart go up the driveway, or? The no. fourth grader getting off the bus? No, well, we got a new policy that says that the superintendent or the principal can make exceptions uh, to the policy for any given reason, for whatever. So that's that's uh, what I well, like about it. Well, the issue is they're a mile up Poland, and yeah. the grip co says they can't turn the bus around up there, yeah. which I actually have seen them turn the bus around in a smaller space. Yeah, they but Lenny said he can't, he can't do it. I have to drive my kids a half mile to the bus between December and April because they can't come yeah, up I don't, the Warren Brook I don't know how to respect this. Well, the kids can't walk. I mean, it's right. it's no, too no, narrow and people yeah. fly. And, yeah. That's uh, exactly yeah, what the, we were just talking about this last week. Do you remember? I, I, I know. It, well, it, it, applies, it applies to this. Well, in a way it does. The, the, the um, <laughs> policy <laughs> is <laughs> if a child lives within a mile of the school, they're not, the bus doesn't normally pick them right. up, but the superintendent can make a decision based on the principal's recommendation. If it's a busy road, say they live a mile on 116, we're not going to have anybody walking on 116. Right. So the bus, bus, we would say bus driveway. pick them up even if it's at the bottom of the driveway. Pick them up and bring them up. The problem with Poland Hill is it's they're far enough away to get picked up, to have the right to be picked yeah. up. But we are not, we're not necessarily door-to-door -door service, although most of our students are. And if the bus company says the bus can't turn around for whatever reason, yeah. I, I don't honestly know how I can, I don't know how, to help them. how do we make the bus driver, or what, the bus? What we've had to do. Can you go up, Mount, up Maine, Poland and out North Poland? I'm, I'm not sure of that, but I can tell you what we've done in other areas um, is we have to pay for Lenny to send one of the, the Jeeps or the, like, we, there's a section in Deerfield in, near one of the schools, private schools, and we send Suburbans up to get the kids, but we'd have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And so then we'd have to have the Suburban. The, um, now, are we talking that the bus, the their driveway is a mile long? No, no. The The... They're, they right now bring the kids down to the covered bridge. They're a mile up Poland Road. Yeah. And the kids can't walk. It's sixth grader, fifth grader, and like a young one. Yeah. So this is going to be going on yeah. a long time. Is it just for the winter months or is it all well, the time? It's the whole time. The whole time, yeah. 
Up time. by Maggie Bean Road or something like that. No, it's there's no neighbors Poland. that can help and get the kids down. There's no other, but there's nobody else up there that can help get the kids down. I don't think. I think the matter, the point that um, the parents are trying to make is that, you know, they want their kids to be transported and, sure. you know, and they pay taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to help them. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure Lenny's looked at it. I mean, I would. Do you have to get permission to turn a bus around in a driveway? Yeah. Yes. Um, could that, they get permission to turn around uh, in a driveway? From Tony Gordon, you could. He's also got insurance. Re there's insurance restrictions. Have to be the class. What his insurance will allow him to do, and there's also regulations, state regulations. Uh, around like cul-de-sacs and, and things like that. There has don't to have be. Those here. I know, but the, we have them. I have them in Sunderland. And uh, the things you learn is that there has to be a certain turning radius of mm -hmm. the cul-de-sac. So because Lenny's trying to go around the cul-de-sac in the back of the bus, taking around, taking out everybody's um, yeah, mailboxes. Mailbox. So, um, mm -hmm. but the, his insurance company will tell him that's too risky, yeah. and so he won't have coverage if he tries to do it. So, right. unfortunately, he's not. They're not refusing to pick up the children. They're just refusing door-to-door -door service. Right. That there is a bus stop on the main route where the children can get on the bus. It's just. Mm. And is there a distance that bus stops have to be? Well, a mile. I mean, that's over a mile. Is it over a mile? I mean, I'm I can clock sure. it. But. I, I, this is the first I'm hearing of yeah. this. Yeah, because I've talked to I've talked to Lenny, and Lenny said. Um, He's like, and he, Lenny's been great. Anytime I've called him about he him, he's been great. I know some, you know, when I came on board, some people were, but he, he's been great. Oh, you had to visit his gas station sometimes. And he it's said, an he, said, he, said he did say, Kristen, I, I, I really legitimately can't get a bus there. I, you know, I wish I could. Um, now the, oh, my, I, I have, I have, I have two thoughts. One, we'd have to find some money and add a Suburban to go get the kids. Mm -hmm. I don't even think that's going to be an option, though, I will tell you, um, because I did. Well, because one kid will be Frontier next year. Well, and I did say the parent, I said one thing I could talk to Patty about um, is whether or not, and, and I, I, her, the kids wouldn't, the kids wouldn't. I don't think the kids, I don't think that will be an option. Well, the other the only option is if I have a special right. ed bus coming up. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, right, right. They right. could take that. Right, if there's room. I could right. check with the special yeah. ed. Yeah, I have a special ed bus that can take some regular passengers. We yeah. can get See, them. See, I that. thought a bus used to do that. I thought a bus used to go up Poland and down well, North Poland. Well, that's what their parent said. They, they did. A bus used to. They yeah. Used to go up. Right. Yeah, that. through Poland Gap because okay. that's why they had to close school even more often because they couldn't get it through there. Or they'd go do like Rory Brook goes through the bus goes through sometimes a year right. and not others. That's Just been the pair argument is that the bus it did, did go. Well, because yeah. there was a whole group of kids that lived yeah. at the where mm -hmm. North Poland and Maine Poland came together. So I don't know why it doesn't go up there anymore. I mean, I mean they're the only family on. I think main Poland now. Do we have an email again? The information you can ask them again. Don't call them for sweet to do it. Not in a mean way, but that would be enough. Well, there, then there's nothing. Oh, no, no, I'm just I, saying. I don't have any other options. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying in a stubborn way it won't be. It, the parents not being stubborn. No, not at all. They're just inquiring about what's well, um, well, if they don't want the Suburban, then they're adamant that they want the 75 passenger bus that won't fit. Well, I'm the not, no, they're, they're not the adamant. They're just like, why? Can't, it used to go up there. How come it can't? And they've been dealing with this for like two years now. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, they haven't really complained. Well, and and unfortunately, they're not being like it's going to be anything. tough for next year because there's an earlier bus for the high school and then the other bus for the uh, for the Conway right. Grammar, and and yeah, you can understand how that would right. be. I mean, they uh, they may be interested in the suburban. I mean, I mean maybe they can get the frontier off. But we have to find the school, money to add that to our budget. Yeah, yeah and, would, and that would. will be. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think the parents are looking to to burden the district in any way like that. I, I, I really don't. Can we hire an Uber? Well, yeah, and I, no, because no, we have to no, them. no, yeah, no. We can call them. I'm sure you have somebody in Conway who run Ubers who grab that ride yeah, every day. Yeah. No, we did. 
do we have Corey? Yeah. Anyway, just do trying to think out of the box. Well, somebody, uh, so you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send Patty the information if you can talk to Lenny, too. I mean, he wasn't being unreasonable. He was just like, no, I, I he's can't. always trying to work with us. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. Yeah. Everyone, anything else? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.